Hello my dear friends, welcome to my channel. Friends, in our previous video, that is S2 database in Spring Boot, we have discussed about how we can configure our H2 database with our Spring Boot application. Now in this particular video, we will see that how we can create a Spring Boot application with H2 database and how we can create and RESTful APIs to perform various CRUD operations that is to read and data from database and then we will see that how we can create or update a record in a database and we will also see that how we can perform a delete operation in our S2 database by using RESTful APIs. So this is our application.properties and in our last video we have already discussed about it that how we can set up and configure our H2 database with our Spring Boot application. So here you can see that we have created a simple Spring Boot applications and it consists of different packages. Now before discussing about different packages, let me first launch our application because I want to connect to our database first so that we can easily understand and relate the model and the different classes which we have created in different layers with our employee table. So friends, this is the URL to access the console for our H2 database. So this is the URL which we have given, then this is the username and the password I have already provided. Now let us connect to our database first. So this is the console window for our S2 database. So let me first try to access our employee table. So this is our employee table and this employee table consists of four different columns. That is employee ID, employee first name, last name and employee role. Now let me take you to our application. So my dear friends, here I have created and different packages. So this is my model package and inside my model package I have created an employee.java class. So here you can see that this is our employee class and I have annotated it with at the rate table annotation and at the rate entity annotation. So by using these annotations, we are directly linking this particular model with our employee table. Then inside our employee class, I have created and four different columns that is employee ID, employee first name, employee last name and employee role number. And here you can see that this employee ID is the primary key of our employee table. That is why I have annotated it with at the rate ID annotation. And here I have used an at the rate column annotation so that I can link this particular field with our column field that is employee ID. And similarly, I have done it for other fields. So here we are having four different fields and similarly we have created and four different fields in our employee model class and I have also created in setter and getter methods for our employee.java class. Now my dear friend this is about our model class. Now friends let us discuss about our controller class and from there we will see that how we can access the service class and from service class how we are accessing our DAO layer. So this is our employee.controller class. This is an REST controller for our Spring Boot application and here we have defined and different endpoints for our employee controller class so that we can perform various operations on our employee table which is present in our database. So my dear friends, this is our employee controller class and here I have annotated it with at the rate REST controller and then the request mapping which I have given is slash programming with Chetan. And my dear friends, as you already know that our server is listening on 8080 port so from Postman application, when we will try to access our APIs, then this is how we will provide the URL to access the APIs. So our host name is localhost and this is the 8080 port. Then for our employee REST controller, we have used and request mapping as slash programming with Chetan. That is why I have provided in programming with Chetan here. Now my dear friends, here you can see that I have provided and different endpoints that is slash employee to get all the employee details then next one is slash employee and then the employee id so this is the endpoint which is used to access the employee details of a particular employee by using an employee id so in url itself we will pass an employee id as a path variable and we will use that path variable in our get employee method to access the detail of that particular employee so friends these are our get apis which we will use to get the details from our employee table then next we have defined an post api by using an post mapping annotation 
and this is the end point for our post request so here this particular save employee method will be used to create an employee record or to update an employee record in our database table then next we have defined and delete employee method and we are using this delete employee method to delete the record of a particular employee and we have defined it with at the rate delete mapping annotation so this is our delete api so my dear friends these are the different endpoints which we have defined for our controller class now from our controller class we are accessing the method of our service layer that is an employee service so we are using an reference of our employee service and here i have used an at the rate auto wide annotation so we are not creating an object of our employee service class and it will be taken care by our spring ioc container to provide the needed dependencies so let me take you to our service layer so this is our employee service interface and inside our interface we have provided a declaration for our four different methods that is in get all employee method then get employee method and inside our get employee method we are passing an employee id so that we can get the detail of particular employee and in our above method that is in get employee method what we are doing we are returning the list of all the employees and in our get employee method we are returning the particular employee object now my dear friends we are having and two more different methods that is a delete method so here we are passing an employee id so that we can delete that particular record from our employee table and then we are having an save or update method so we will use this method to create a record in our employee table or to update a record in a employee table so here we are passing the employee details in our save or update method so now let us discuss about the different service layer methods which we have defined inside our service iampl class and my dear friends in the top you can see that we have defined a reference for our employee dao class or a repository layer and here again you can see that we have used an at the rate auto wired annotation and also for our service implementation class we have used an at the rate service annotation so when we are creating any service class in our spring boot application then we denote it with at the rate service annotation now let us discuss about our get all employee method so this method is returning a list of employees and here you can see that we have created an array list of employee type now before discussing about our next statement let me first take you to our employee dao interface so this is our employee dao interface and my dear friends we have not defined any implementation class for our employee dao because we are using an cred repository methods which is a predefined methods provided by our spring framework so we are making the use of available ready made methods so if we go inside our cred repository interface then here you can see that we are having an save method so we can pass the entity and it will be saved in a database then we can also pass the list of entities and we can use and save all method to save multiple records at a time then to find a particular record we can use a method that is find by id and then if you want to check that any particular method is existing in a database or not then we can use an exist by id method and then if we want to get the list of all the records from a database table then we can use an find all method similarly we are having various other methods that is an count method and then if we want to delete a record from our database table by using a particular id then we can use and delete by id method so here we are passing an id to our delete by id method so my dear friend these are the various methods which is an ready made methods available to us by our spring framework so let us make the best use of these available methods and if you are not satisfied with the current implementation then we can also override this method in our dao layer and we can provide our custom implementation